Hello and welcome to today's Key Insight webinar on building a career as a modern marketer and focusing on your career development. My name is James Delves. I'm Sims Head of PR and External Affairs and I'll be the host for today's webinar. Before we get started, I'd just like to go over a few items so you know how to participate. The presentation will last for approximately 40 minutes. During this time, you'll be able to send text questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the chat box of the control panel. You may send in your question any time during the presentation and we'll collect them and address as many as we can during the Q&A session at the end. Unfortunately, we don't send out slides of the presentation. However, the webinar will be available to watch on demand via our Content Hub Exchange in the next couple of working days. So I'd now like to hand over to Scott Allen, our guest speaker today. Scott spent four and a half years as Microsoft CMO where he's responsible for leading marketing for both the consumer and commercial sectors. He now holds the title of Global Marketing Development and Strategy Director. Over to you, Scott. Thank you, James, and good afternoon, everybody. So, yeah, my name is Scott Allen. Uh, as James said, I previously was the CMO for Microsoft UK, running both consumer and commercial marketing. And more recently, uh, over the last sort of 10 months or so, I've moved into the Microsoft headquarters team, and I am part of the team that is basically leading the global B2B transformation for Microsoft. So let me let me start off with a slide. I think the first one is about is transformation and whether it's your company, whether it's you personally, we're all transforming at the moment. And there's a lot of talk at the moment about companies digitally transforming. And in order to transform, we as marketers have to do the, the same. So today I'm going to focus on modern marketing transformation to set the scene, and then I'll go more into sort of personal development and growth, which I'm hoping you'll find useful. I'll be using questions I regularly get asked and calling upon situations I've had been in over the last 25 years or so uh, within marketing. And that's everything from through being a marketing assistant when I first started out in my career, all the way through to being the, the UK CMO at Microsoft. So first and foremost, um, digital transformation, and why digital transformation? Well, essentially, every organization, and we're no different in Microsoft, are being confronted by what we're calling four major shifts that a, a digital revolution brings. And even someone like Microsoft, who are 47 years old, despite our long history, we've also faced the same challenges that you will be facing within your businesses. And that's things such as the acceleration of innovation with things such as the cloud, the data revolution, and AI new consumer behaviors that are more volatile, their consumers are more demanding, and they're more connected than they ever were before. And also the disruption of business models in all areas that requires addressing markets differently. We're seeing many organizations now popping up and disrupting the norm across travel, retail, finance, utilities, etc. And then finally, as we engage in new tech as organizations, we have a new set of responsibilities. And that's responsibilities in terms of our development ethics, respect for privacy, and also the environmental impact as well. So these four major shifts are meaning that we as organizations have to digitally transform. So what does that mean for us as, as marketeers? Well, let's talk about what we, what we describe as, as modern marketing. And really, for me, modern marketing, if I go on to the next slide, modern marketing is essentially about three different things, but all connected. People, processes, technology tools. And it's important to think about the three together rather than individually, because if you think about them individually, then you're not going to get to where you need to in terms of your modern marketing transformation. So as marketeers, we definitely do need to change. Uh, we need to invest in people, and we need to invest in process, and we need to invest in tools. And we need to get to a place where we don't just talk about digital marketing, we talk about marketing that has digital at the heart of it. We still very much compartmentalize digital as being a part of marketing, when really getting it at the heart of what, what you do as a marketer is going to be really, really critical as, as we go forward. So first of all, we need to take a natural position of being strong in our marketing planning and the execution. And that means that you have to relook at the processes you've got. What processes do you have in place? Do they need updating? And if so, how do they need updating, especially when it comes to marketing planning? Secondly, it's about investing in people and culture, and that's investing personally in yourself, but also organizations investing in their people and the culture. Building a team 
that feels it can learn and grow and transform, which is embracing modern marketing and has members in that team who want to be part and support the transformation and culture of an organization that's changing. And then and only then, the third bit is about developing a strategy around the marketing technology stack and the required processes alongside it. It's not about just bringing technology in because you can. It's about understanding why you need to bring technology into organization, what is it going to do, how is it going to help you have a much more first-class, customer-centric marketing approach. And that leads quite nicely then onto uh, the next slide, which is about essentially making sure that once and for all, we put the customer first by realizing the value of every interaction. It's very easy to say we're a customer first, customer centric organization, but now is the time to really start to um, put that into action. And modern marketing is really about putting the customer first. And we've been on our own transformation with Microsoft over the last four years or so, and it's been about customer first. That's everything that we've invested in is about the customer first piece. And we now live in a world where um, any touch point during a customer journey can impact the lifetime value of that customer. So the importance of the customer experience and failing to realize the value of every interaction means that you could miss opportunities and lose out on future revenue. And what I see from dealing with lots of different organizations is those that lead the way hold every touch point of the customer to account. They've got that they understand the signals, the layers and the opportunities when to talk to the customer, how to talk to them, and the opportunity to monetize at the right time. And that really comes down into what I would call three different distinct areas. And that's the first one is finding new ways of working. So in most organizations, marketing has now taken a centralized role and is responsible for managing the customer experience more so than ever before. Therefore, finding new ways of working is important for, for you as individuals and as a team so that you can collaborate better and you can collaborate not just as a marketing team, but also with the rest of the organization. For example, by leading on internal collaboration, the marketing team can be the ones that can manage the internal flow of all customer insights and content right across the organization, making sure that everybody's on the same page. And also the importance of providing employees with the opportunity to work anywhere from any device will give more flexibility in the working day. But also what I found is that by having a, a good, strong digital uh, approach means that you as marketeers can collaborate much easier and you don't always have to be in person, face to face in order to do that. The second bit is about making moments that matter. And a moment can be anything from discovering a new TV show, watching your favorite football team on the TV, going to shopping online at your favorite store. These moments are times when customers are indulging and experience their choice, but could also be open to brand engagement. And, and this, uh, this works in both a B2C and a B2B world. And we now have a multi-screen at home uh, approach with the average household having around 11 internet internet connected devices and therefore brands need to now think about creating their own moments and making those moments matter and as marketeers we need to understand what is the right time to touch a, a person when they are consuming and how should we do that and then the final bit is this bit about monetizing every customer interaction and that really is monetizing every interaction is about how an organization will build up layers of interaction with their customers increase the number and size of transactions with that customer over their lifetime. And again, to do this, marketers need to unleash the power of big data and they need to extrapolate the right insights. I think a lot of organizations still have lots of data, but they're rich on data and poor on insight. And now about serving insights up and using insights to make forward make and market decisions is definitely going to be the way to, to go. So that all then leads quite nicely to really what does a marketing transformation look like? And this, this sort of diagram is about how do you move from the left hand side, the traditional over to the right hand side. Um, at Microsoft, we've been on this journey for, for over four years now. And I'd say that we're in a, a pretty good position across all the blue boxes now on the right hand side. We're not perfect in, in all of them, but we've, we've come a long way from really changing how we do our marketing and how we approach it. And again, with the customer first approach that I talked about, this has meant that we need to do things like move into a buyer driven multi channel journey and purchase process, not a sales one. We need to move away from one and done campaigns where you're doing one campaign, another one, another one, another one, and actually move into connected always on campaigns. Ensuring that if you've got a headquarter marketing team and a field marketing team that they're working hand in hand, they're connected in sync so that the maximum impact is uh, being put in place. And also then it's about bringing in the right tools for the right reasons and unleashing the power of the data that I mentioned 
so that you will have a very insights-led uh, approach to how you do your marketing, which will allow you to be uh, much more better in terms of the forward-making decisions you make, but also where to invest your valuable marketing dollars as well. So you know, this sort of moving to the left, moving to the right is really, really important. There's lots of good organizations out there that are, are doing that. Um, a lot of them are, are will be members of the, of the CIM. So then the next one is then about what about the, the team? What about the marketing team itself? So what I would say is our role as a, as a marketeer has got wider and wider, more important uh, over the last few years. And here in this particular slide, you can see the three key components of our job as marketeers across the customer journey. I always talk about our job really goes from minus 20% of the customer journey all the way through to 100% where the customer is bought from us, but also then the post-purchase usage and consumption piece is also important as well for a lot of uh, organizations who are selling products and services. And you should think about this as being very much a, a circular motion rather than a linear one. And the days are gone now where we, we as marketeers are just about the middle box there around generating demand. We should think differently about leads in what is now a multi-touch world. Our job is to make markets and take markets. And therefore, we need to be good at reputation building or commercial intent if you're in the B2B world, generating interactions and demands, but also helping support the sales journey through to purchase. So no longer are we just about generating leads and demands. We have to do one to three. What that essentially means is that how we hire as a marketing team in this sort of new world of modern marketing is very, very different. And... You know, this is what you know a modern marketing organization looks like. It mirrors very nicely you know, the roles that we have within Microsoft. And it sort of says, how do we hire now versus, say, five years ago? The modern marketing team is really about two types of persona, part scientist and part creative. And if you put these two together, that's when you get a stronger team. And by part scientist, this can mean data analytics, also financial analysts who tie activity to revenue objectives and really understand performance-related demands. And also having tech-savvy marketers who understand automation and web production. In marketing, it's also important to report how performance is tracking against established goals of the business. So it's also important that as marketers now, we deliver a simple and clear analysis on how things are going, whether that's good or not so good. So this part scientific bit is, is sort of new to marketing, but I'm, I've been hiring in, in my CMO role lots of uh, different skill sets on the left-hand side. And then on the, on the right-hand side, the part creative, this is some of the traditional marketing world mixed in with a new world. And also, even roles that existed previously have changed. Content marketers who know how to tell stories and can create and amplify very accessible written content. You've got um, socially uh, active uh, members of the team who engage in the right channels. It's no longer just about tweeting or posting information. It's about interacting with humans on the other side, running community. So... The role of a, a social marketeer has definitely changed as well. And then events, that's even a change as well. Physical events are still important, but it's now not just about showing up and showcasing the product. It's about the experience that you deliver um, at an event and also before it and after it. And also connecting physical events to, digital, to, to the right digital channels. So this is sort of part scientific, part creative is really what, what a modern marketing organization looks like. And then finally on this section, what about the modern marketeer um, and how that's changed? So a modern marketeer leader has, has really changed. You can see the sort of the left to the right here of what it was like to, to what it's like now. And I personally have seen this shift happen in my own career. So all of this stuff on the right-hand side resonates with me uh, yeah, quite a lot, particularly the customer focus element and the difference between now being a talent recruiter rather than um, to, from being a talent recruiter previously to now being a talent developer. Um, nuanced, but really, really important. You know, people have choice about which companies they join nowadays. Therefore, as a leader, developing your talent and making sure that they're coming with you on the journey is very, very important, and you are making sure they've got the right skills to do that. And this sort of modern leader, modern marketing approach leads quite nicely to, to, to the rest of the presentation. So what I'm going to do for the, for the remainder of the presentation is I'm going to switch gears and talk a little bit more about stuff that, that I have been asked over, over a number of years uh, and try to sort of help answer some of the questions that, that have come through. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of address a number of different questions and then just give sort of my take on it, which hopefully will, will give you some, some help as you think about your careers.
So the first one is, how do you figure out what you want to do marketing career-wise out of university? So I'm an example of someone that did that, actually, uh, coming from Bournemouth University many, many years ago. I left uni with a marketing degree, and I also had my CF CIM qualifi qualification at the same time. And when you're leaving uni, it's very, very tempting, um, and maybe from a financial perspective, critical to apply for as many marketing roles as possible so that you have more chance of landing a role. This does make sense, uh, but my advice would be to plan early before you get to the job application stage. So for me, I was deliberate in choosing an industry that I wanted to go into, an area that I wanted to go into, and then managed to get some free advice from employees, managers within companies within the area that I'd identified. This particular case, I was looking at the telco sector. It was when telecoms was moving from analog to digital, so it was an area that really, really interested me. Um, and even better, I was able to, to do some, some free work experience at, at one of the tech to telecom firms. And that allowed me to really get an understanding of whether that was the right uh, area to go into. And then I started to apply to a number of organizations that were in the telco sector. And I was, I was lucky enough to, uh, to land a marketing assistant role. Next question, what are the top five KPIs that a marketer should include? I would call these personal KPIs rather than your company business objective KPIs because that can vary by company by company and there's a number of you on the call. So I'm not going to try to, to address company KPIs, but if I talk about personal KPIs, mine have been very much around being bold, feeling that I'm in a transformation mindset, so being transformative, always thinking about what, what to do next, what's the important thing to change to, to become better, yearn to, to, to learn and be better, so I'm always in a sort of a learning cycle, even now, I definitely don't know it all, so I'm always learning, I'm always understanding what else I need to know. Um, and I think most critically in this day and age, and you can do it now with, with data now being able to be served up, is have an insights mindset so that you can start to use uh, insights to make decisions, but also insights to coach and educate the rest of the organization who maybe don't believe in marketing. And then finally, people make businesses succeed. So I very much have the mindset of helping to be part of the change that you want to see in your business. So that's across the culture, the approach to the environment and not be the person that is resistant to change. So that's sort of what I would call the five personal KPIs. The next one is, how do you convince someone your marketing plan is the right thing to do? I get asked this question quite a lot because obviously we do have resistance when it comes to, to marketing plans. So again, I'm gonna to touch on the insights bit. It's all about using insights based on data. It is a much better conversation to have with your sales team or with your um, hierarchy within an organization if you're using insights, facts, rather than just opinion. For example, we should do this event because of XXX, XXX insights, such as this is the propensity of the customer who are gonna buy from us, this is the location those customers are in, these are the types of roles in that customer that will buy, let's do an event with these customers in this particular region with these job roles rather than let's go and do an event because we've done it over the last three years and it seems to work. So very much insights, use insights, facts to have conversations with your stakeholders. The next one is, when is it safe to move more towards strategy and leave the tactical behind without jeopardizing your value as a marketeer to your organization? This one's an interesting one. It's, it's obviously a fine balance, of course, as there is a need for you to be playing a role in hitting the near-term company objectives and the revenue targets, because that's obviously super critical. However, it is important to think about marketing doing three things. Building reputation or commercial intent in the B2B world, generating demand, and enabling uh, the sales journey. So depending on where you invest will, inf will affect whether you make a market. And talk, when I talk about making a market, that's planning on moving into a market where you're not yet known or taking a market, which is a market you're already in and you need to generate more opportunities and revenue for the here and now. Depending on whether you're in the make market or take market is then um, whether you have these objectives or these objectives. So there is a difference between the two because obviously making a market means you've got to go and build reputation, so your measurement is going to be different to if you're taking a market where you're generating leads. I think also importantly in this area is, whatever you do, make sure you discuss and agree and plan it with key stakeholders right up front. Your sales teams, your product groups, your finance teams, bring them along on what you're trying to achieve so that there are no surprises down the line. The next one. 
how do you manage your marketing career in a company that is very short-term focused? We've all been there. I've been in many an organization that's very short-term focused. And you know there are challenges because we have to get revenue through the door. So it's always a challenge. But it's easy to get into the mode of short-term, short-term, short-term and end up doing things that stakeholders are asking for without actually any purpose or strategies to the why. We just do them because we're asked to and we think it's going to help us get some revenue through the door. This is where you need to get stakeholders into your way of thinking and talk to them about the notion of the make market and take market. If you're building a reputation plan to take a market, the ROI measurements are going to be very different compared to, say, if you are making a mark, um, make, taking a market even, um, where you have to generate more traditional leads, opportunities and revenue objectives. So set those objectives up front, ensure everyone buys into those objectives and also the measures of success. And then again, as mentioned before, there are no surprises down the line. The next one, how important is it to have a marketing mentor, mentor and why? Well, I personally think this is a very, very important thing to do. And I, I personally benefited so much from having a mentor. And I've probably got two tips here. If you have a mentor who is, uh, has a marketing background, then pick someone outside your company, and even better, outside your industry. And when you do go to see them, don't see them to discuss your day-to-day -day job, but use them more to help them advise you on your future career progression, how to maybe show up better in a situation, and also to discuss any particular tough situations that may be on the horizon for you. That's what mentors are really good at doing, rather than sort of telling you about your day-to-day -day campaign that you're trying to get out the door. I also have a mentor who has no marketing background, but is a CTO, and this is something I can highly recommend as well, because having a mentor who is not a marketeer, they can give you a lot of um, uh, more objective thinking, but also you're not tempted to get into just marketing speak all the time with that mentor. And then finally, you may want to look at uh, a peer mentor. Um, that's someone who's not more senior to you in the organization, and therefore is therefore close to your day-to-day -day job and has an understanding of what your job's all about. It's a great way to have more dedicated, focused time to talk through certain areas and situations specific to your job. And also a peer mentor could be in your company or it could be someone doing a similar role in another company. So think about sort of a more senior mentor, but also potentially a peer mentor as well. Next question, how to move into a role when you have potential versus all the required experience? Again, sometimes you have your CEO role come up that you want to apply for, and your your first feeling is, I won't apply because I'm not. I don't tick all the boxes. Don't have all the experience. A lot of organisations aren't always looking for that. They're looking for a, a mix of someone who is is what they can grow into versus what they already can can bring to the table now. And I think it, this happens more than you think. So I've placed many people in a role with the opportunity for them to learn and grow into it. And I think it's important as a hiring manager not to expect candidates to know everything moving into a role as this is actually unrealistic. Encourage, for me, encourage a learning culture as we are always learning new things. I'm always making sure that I learn stuff week on week so that we get better at what we do. And I think if you can demonstrate an attitude and approach to want to continue learning and not pretend you know anything, then this will absolutely give you a great advantage in, in going for a role. Next question, what experience do you need to make the move from a manager to director or head of marketing role? Um, this one, there's probably no blanket answer to this. As obviously, it depends on the size of the company, where they are in their growth cycle, and also whether they're a B2B or B2C organization. But what I would say is the passion to continue developing as a person in your career as, as a must-do rather than getting into a situation where you're in retrain mode. So... Continually make sure that you're keeping up to date with the latest trends. Continue to understand you know, where your role is potentially going and where the next role that you might apply for is going as well, rather than get into a situation where you want to go for a manager role, but you don't feel you have the skills or the, uh, the knowledge and you're in a, a massive sort of retrain. I need to understand, I need to understand, and you're trying to cram in all the stuff that you could have learned uh, over a period of time. So I would say try to get practical experience alongside the theory, either by doing side projects in your company. Is there an opportunity to go and, if your manager lets you, go and spend some time on another project that maybe isn't so related to your role? Or seeing if maybe you can do skills exchanges with other companies. In Microsoft, we do skills exchanges all, all the time, and it works really well. For example, our social team might go and spend the day with the social team from a, one of our customers, and they just exchange ideas and um different working practices between them and that often works well as well if there's an opportunity to do that. Next question, what technical technical skills are needed to jump to a director position? 
I think all direct trade positions vary. So um, what I would say here is that I wouldn't necessarily talk about technical skills. Uh, what I would say is developing a personal vision for me has been important as that is the deepest expression of where, where you want to go in your life. So I've really sort of made sure that I've had a personal vision that I am trying to work to as I've gone through my career. And it might seem deep in some of the questions, but you know you need to ask yourself questions such as, what are the most important elements of your personal vision? What do you want and dream of most? Think of the areas in your life uh, where you're, you're happy and where you want to make sure that you um, still are able to do the things that you want to, to do personally. Think about where you want to get to in terms of you know, career and, and money and how high do you want to go. It's asking yourself all those questions so that you don't feel you're just caught in the moment of going through your career, you've got an idea of where you want to get to and, and where you may want to stop in terms of how far up the ladder you go. And then, you know, really start to think about what would my main achievements be in the next sort of five to 10 years? How do you want to spend your time in, in the business? Do you want to be more internally focused? Do you want to be more customer focused? Do you want to spend more time um, at, you know, events and being more out uh, uh, dealing with uh, customers and partners day to day? Um, and also, you know, what would a, a really good year look like in the, in a particular role that, that that you're into? So I think having that personal vision and, and how far you want to go, because I found when I was sort of in my 20s, I was getting caught up in the, well, I need to be a marketing manager, then I need to be a head of marketing, then I need to be a marketing director. And it felt like I, I just wanted to do these different jobs. But actually, there might have been a situation where I could have gone sideways to get to here, to get to there, to get to there. So it's having to think about how you do that. Next one is, what's the most valuable lesson you've learned in marketing business and how did it come about? So I think for me, the most valuable lesson I've learned is don't get left behind. And I sort of touched on this. Marketing is changing constantly and, and it will continue to. So while some of the key principles of marketing will remain the same, how we approach it from strategy and execution will continue to change. And this is very, very true in the digital world. We talk a lot about digital transformation, but it is important that as a person, you transform personally too. And I felt a number of years back that I was not on top of all the new trends and approaches that were coming. So I decided there and then that I would make sure I keep on top of what is coming and, and therefore keep reinventing myself as I needed to, but in the moment rather than as a sort of desperation because I had to. So I'd say I've probably reinvented myself at least three times, my skills in my career. And that never stops. So if I try to do marketing now like I did 10 years ago, then I would fail and I, I would struggle to, to get any meaningful role. So making sure you don't get left behind would be my, my biggest tip. Next one. With the pressures of general life, how do you manage the work-life balance and how important is that in today's society? Well, work-life balance is, is, is really, really important to me. And I know that in our day-to-day -day jobs, we get very, very busy, but it's important that you do have that mix of work and life balance um, because important to me are, are me, but also my family and, and, and the colleagues. If I'm working too hard, I'm not going to show up too well in front of my colleagues. If I'm working too many hours, I'm not going to show up in front of my family. So I'm a big advocate that we have to have the right work and life balance mix in a world that is always on. I'm lucky that Microsoft is a big advocate of this too. I'm, I know not every organization may be quite where Microsoft is, but it's important that you, you really think about how your work-life work balance uh, works. And I'm strong about when I have downtime. It's important to me that I have rest and recovery. If I don't, then I'm not gonna be very good at the, the job that I do. And therefore I won't be any good to anyone and my performance will definitely be impacted. So I therefore have got very good at switching off when I have family time or leisure time. Um, this starts with not being tempted to keep picking up my phone and checking what is happening. Um, people can live without you for a few hours in, in business uh, unless you've got a super critical deadline that's been hit. Um, and also I make sure that I'm in the room in the moment. It might sound obvious, but if your body is also telling you to sleep as well, go to sleep and leave that piece of work until the morning. I, I got into a real mode uh, 15 years ago where I would work to very, very early hours because I had to get something done. Whereas if I just left it and got up earlier the next morning, I would have done a much better job. So, you know, I think that it can mean that, you know, sometimes uh, you need to, to, to work in the moment into an evening to do something, but also make sure you get that rest and recovery back so that you've got the right sort of mix built in. And then to close off, there's sort of four, four sort of quick, quick fire questions. 
Um, first one is, uh, I'll get asked, how did you get into your current position and do you like it? Um, I think I've had what could be described as a, a staircase career. I went to uni, I was then a marketing assistant, a marketing manager, a marketing director, et cetera, et cetera. So I've gone very staircase in, in my career development, which is not necessarily the way you need to go, especially not in this, this day and age where you, know, you can flip between uh, different roles as needed. So it's not a blueprint for how to do it, how I, I've done it. Um, but I think key along all of this was I was clear where I wanted to end up and where I wanted to go, which I've touched on earlier even if I didn't know particularly what the role sequence might be. Um, and I was clear what drives my passions and what gives me energy and what doesn't. Um, and I think also my first for learning and also thinking customer first means I'm very good at sort of being able to translate internal thinking that often the organisation has into an ex external viewpoint. And that's allowed me to be the more external focus to sort of, you know, try and then move up to, to, to head up a marketing team. Second question is, uh, what are the most important skills that you want to see if you are looking to hire someone? I mean, obviously, there's the, there's the clear checking the experience and qualifications are aligned to the role. But for me, it's also massively about the personal fit that someone has. So I look for one key thing in somebody, and that's, it, are they curious? Do they have curiosity? I really like working with people that want to investigate, they want to learn, they want to think about new things, and they want to do things differently. In Microsoft, we have a culture of growth mindset and being curious aligns to that very well. So somebody who's curious will, will ask the right type of questions, but also maybe just want to be a little bit different to, to the other candidates, really are the ones that, that I'm looking for once they've been qualified in from the, uh, the experience point of view. And then the last two is, what is the most valuable marketing skill you can have? Um, I think personally, it is this notion of being customer centric and thinking from the customer's point of view particularly when you're having internal discussions or creating that next marketing plan and brief. It's really good to be in a meeting um, where you are the one thinking, well, what would the customer think? How would that land with the customer? And keep then using that lens to then give feedback in the meetings that you're in, especially if you're with your sales team or, or others who are maybe a little bit more internally focused. And then the final one is, what advice have you received from your mentor that made the most impact? Might sound simple, but it was keep on learning and don't try to be the smartest person in the room. It's fine to not know everything and ask questions. And trust me, um, I, I may be 25 years into marketing, but I am not scared of asking the very, very simple questions in, in a meeting, regardless of who's in there, even if it's my boss's boss's boss. So keep on learning. Don't feel you need to be uh, knowing everything and be the smartest person in the room. And then finally, to close off, um, these are sort of my, my five sort of takeaways that, that I've had from personally uh, developing my career. And first one is really understand what model marketing is uh, and, and how it can benefit your organization. You know, what, how quickly does your model marketing journey have to go? What are the things you need to focus on first? Because you can't do it all at once. It takes time. The second thing is, from a personal perspective, think about what your development plan is and put it down, write it down. Too often people talk about what they want to do, but they don't write it down and then they don't have a clear vision of, of where they want to get to. Third one is about this piece of learn it, learn all approach uh, rather than being a know it all. Um, we, we at Microsoft have really uh, taken that notion. Our, our CEO, Satya Nadella, talks about having a learning culture and not being know it all. So I really, really do uh, align to that particular vision. Um, the fourth one is really, really important. Spend time with peers and senior marketers from other industries. That is the best way to learn and hear um, what others are up to and maybe get some best practice ideas, but also to make future contacts for maybe future future roles, but also, more importantly, for uh, future ideas. Um, so when you have signed up for that breakfast webinar in London and you wake up and you don't really want to go and you end up not going, force yourself out of bed and go to that breakfast webinar because I said a seminar because that's probably where you're going to meet someone that you can learn from but also a lot of the contacts I now have are people that I've met from making sure that I go out and spend time with peers and with other marketeers and then finally um, not just saying this because I'm on a, a, a CIM webinar but I've now been a member of the CIM for, for 20 plus years and they've been a really key part of where I've gone in terms of how can we keep relevant, keeping up to date with my knowledge and my skills. So really make use of the CIM and the resources that they have there. Often you can underuse the resources they've got. There's a wealth of them. So I would definitely recommend uh, making sure you take advantage of, um, of the CIM and the resources and everything that, that they offer. And that was everything for me, James.
Perfect. Thank you so much, Perfect. Scott. Thank you so much, Scott. And we're now going to answer questions that have been submitted. As a reminder, you can still submit your questions via the chat box in the attendee control panel. And Scott, our first question is around um, how do you keep up to date in the market? How do you keep up to date in marketing and not get left behind? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a, it's a good question. And it's very easy to get left behind because you're so busy in your day-to-day -day job. So I've got very strict on the social channels that I use. Um, so a typical one is I, I don't get caught up now so much on things like Facebook, uh, you know, reading sort of endless stuff of what people are up to. I've, I've used LinkedIn. Um, and Twitter, and I use them as being able to keep up to date in terms of articles being posted, videos being posted. I love LinkedIn, and I love LinkedIn because if you've connected with the right types of people, they are posting really good, rich content all the time, and that's a good way of sort of just keeping up to date with trends and stats and skills-related uh, uh, information. So be very strict on which social channels you use, but then make sure you invest time in not just scrolling through, but actually clicking on, on articles and links and going to do that as well. I'm also uh, very, very strong at going to the right types of events. And you, know, you can go to an event every day in marketing. You probably go to five events every day in marketing. But picking ones where I know I'm going to go and learn something. So this week, for example, I, I went to um, the B2B Online Connect uh, conference that was taking place. And in the room were 60 senior marketers. And I had two days of my, I took two days out of my job to go and spend time with them, but I got to learn what other organizations are doing, but also just got to have personal one-to-one -one time with lots of other senior marketeers. Now, that was quite a, a, a sort of a two-day event, and it's a bit, bit of a bigger event in terms of its organization, but there are so many breakfast seminars, even in events that are being run, where you can go and keep up to date. So I would say they're my two main areas, and it hasn't done me bad so far. Obviously, there are often times I can learn internally from from people in the roles that I've been in, but actually those social sites plus the, the events the two that have kept me uh, very honest and, and up to date where I'm going, and also an opportunity to do courses if needed. So if you're not very good at presenting and you need to present more, see whether there's an opportunity for your, your organization to, to help you attend particular courses for skill sets. And it may not be just marketing related, it may be more around business orientated. I've done Challenger, Challenger sales and challenger marketing courses. So that would be the third piece. But the, the sort of the free of charge stuff would be the social uh, sites and the events. Perfect. Thank you very much, Scott. Um, you talked a little bit about mentoring. Um, yeah. Why would you recommend someone who isn't a marketer as a mentor? Right. So I, I've got sort of two experiences of this. First of all, I mentor people in Microsoft who aren't marketeers. Um, and I also have. Um, an external mentor who is a CTO, as I mentioned earlier. What I what I like about mentoring, when you think about mentoring, you break it down. What do you want mentoring to do? Mentoring should not be about how somebody helps you with a campaign that you need to get out the door or with some messaging you need to get ready for an event. That's maybe a peer mentor that you could use for that sort of idea thinking and stuff. A real mentor is about advising you on where you're going in your career, helping advise you at the time so maybe you've got a situation coming up um, where you need some advice about how to show up, or maybe you're in a situation that is not a great situation and you need some advice about how to address it and get out of there. Often if somebody's not in marketing, they won't get caught up in your day-to-day -day job. They would advise you about how you would act, whether you're a marketer, a seller, a finance person, an HR person, et cetera, et cetera. So I found that um, when I'm giving my mentoring to sellers and product people within Microsoft, they're asking me more about, hey, this is where I want to go next in my career, or I have a big presentation to do on Friday. How would how best to win the audience over? What would be the uh, the best way to, to sort of show up? How many slides do you think I should be using versus Q and A, etc. That I can give answers because I don't need to know the day to day job, which is more based on the experience I've had. So I think use your it's about using your mentor for your development, either in the moment development or future yeah. development. And if you use an external person, they won't be so caught up in your day-to-day -day life as a marketeer. And I think the CTO I've been using meant, has meant that he's given me really, really sound advice, especially as I started to grow up through the ladder in terms of being a manager, a director, and, uh, and then a CMO in Microsoft. Thank you, Scott. So the, the next one's around um, 
SMEs that are a significant percentage of the UK businesses, obviously. Um, what advice do you have for people within an SME regarding building their career as a modern marketer? Yeah, now, I, my career is actually half and half. So I've, I've spent time in um, two startups uh, and two organizations that are in second stage of funding. So I've been, I've been in a, a, a small enterprise um, in my career. Now, there's two ways of looking at it. When you're in a small, medium enterprise, you are getting way more experience across all facets of marketing because you know, there's not many of you in the, in the team and therefore you're learning much more than you think. I, I still, in my job in Microsoft, I still use experience I've had from being in a, a small, medium enterprise um, in, in sort of the bigger enterprises. Then when I left me, I went into sort of uh, larger enterprises. Um, what it is, is, is sometimes that sort of, how do you move from a smaller organization to a bigger one? What I wouldn't do is get hung up by the fact that you're not qualified to work for a bigger, big organization. In a SME, you have got the opportunity, as I said, you know, there might be only one or two of you and you've got the opportunity to cover all the things of marketing. Um, and I think that there is a lot of good resources out there now uh, on the web and, and some of the events that I've talked about where you can go and learn about how to make the best use of resources and the low budgets you've got. I've worked in you know, organizations where my budget has been minuscule and that's meant we've had to, to box and, and work much more smartly. What I've done in all those organizations though is I've made sure that everybody in the business understands what the role of marketing is there to do because a lot of people, if they're not in marketing, just have a very, very simple mindset of what it is. You are the guys that, and, and ladies that will run events for us. You're all about generating lots of leads for us. You, you're about making sure that we've got the right content materials. It's very basic stuff that often people think that we are there to do. So spending some time on to the educating what the purpose of marketing is, what the role of it is, how it's going to be measured, how it's changed in a world where customers are now in control. Um, the days have gone where the seller is the only person that touches the customer. The customer decides when they want to um, speak to an organization or interact with an organization. The seller doesn't you know, make that choice for them. So I think, you know, in, in simplistic form, enjoy life being in a SME because you are getting more marketing skills across all the different facets of, of marketing compared to if you're in a bigger enterprise where you have a more um, specified uh, discipline role. Um, bring your company along with you in the the view of what marketing is there to do and what it isn't there to do and continue to take advantage of uh, interacting with peers out there who are in similar companies and again if you really go online and you start to look at some of the events that run during the course of the week just in London alone um, or in the north of England in Manchester in, in Newcastle there are lots where it is just attended by by SMEs and you can go and spend time with with like-minded people um, and some of my best ideas for marketing have come in a SME and I was able to go and implement them because I wasn't caught up with all the processes and the red tape of being in a in a large enterprise um, and then when you do move to an enterprise or look to go to a, into an enterprise you've got a lot of skills that are transferable and a lot of enterprises will want to um, take you on board because you'll probably be um, one of the most savvy modern marketeers out there because you've had to you know, work with, with more limited resource and, um, and budget. So hopefully that helps address that one. Perfect. So we have just time for one more question. So I've, I've kind of bundled two together for you. Um, do you see the yeah. marketing department changing much over the next 10 years? And do you have any advice regarding monetizing personal relationships between internal sales teams and customers? I might need some help on just a bit of clarification what the second part means, but let me answer the first part first of all. Yeah, I mean, I, I, do, see, I do see marketing departments changing over, over the next 10 years or so. I, I think that we're in a situation now where um, there's an opportunity via digital to uh, have more scalable engines that we can, we can rely on. Um, and when I mean scalable, it doesn't necessarily mean scalable across hundreds of countries, although that, that is possible as well. I think what we what we do as marketers is we we will start to rely much more on using the right technology um, as part of the customer journey that can also be automated and do a lot of the work for you that wasn't there previously. That means as a marketer, I see our jobs as being much more commercially savvy, you know, much more closer to the business, much more closer to the customer, understanding the customer 
and how they think, that means that you're going to be much more aligned to the sellers. Um, you know, in Microsoft, we worked really hard on making sure that our marketeers um, understand the customer and therefore are often asked to go and visit the customer uh, alongside the seller, especially when it's um, going to meet the marketing department from a customer who are maybe one of the decision makers. So in short, I would say next 10 years, I see digital and tech really playing a role in giving you the sort of the scalable platform and some of the programs on top that you can just sort of run um, day in, day out. And then on top of that would be um, extracting the insights and interpreting those to make sure you're doing the right type of marketing, but also then as marketeers being much more commercially savvy in terms of understanding the market, the customer, and um, the, the company that you work in, and I call that the three C's. Know your customer, know your company, and know your competition as well. The second bit of the question, how do you quantify and monetize personal relationships between internal sales team members and specific customers? I probably need some bit more context on the monetize bit there, if possible. I, I think people just would, I would like to hear a little bit um, of advice between how you personally work with sales teams and customers to yeah. basically make sure your marketing campaigns are successful. Got it. Got it. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the big things that I've been personally very strong, but also I've made sure the teams that, that, that have been uh, you know, working with me uh, have been on is the connected sales and marketing. And we talk about connected sales and marketing a lot, but never has connected sales and marketing been more true than now, especially in a world where customers are in control. So we always had this sort of Sellers are, you know, sales organizations are, are still out there. A lot of organizations are still sales-led. That's absolutely fine. But marketing now has a, has a really key role to play because, first of all, we can start to serve insights up that we never could before, how customers are interacting with us, which ones are interacting with us who the sellers don't even know. And we've got really good examples in Microsoft where we've got, we can look now and we can see um, – how many people in a customer is currently interacting with us across our different marketing activities, whether that's events or webinars or content or trials, etc. And often you'll have like 70 people in a company who are interacting with us, but the sales team only know 10 of them. Um, and that's already then a different conversation because you can start talking to the sellers about, hey, did you realize the HR department are currently interacting with us? Are you talking to the HR department? So we can bring sort of more insights to the table. Um, and that is helping us, you know, become more important, more prevalent to the, to the sellers. The other bit is about what you do as marketeers to get closer to sellers. So I'm really, really um, clear with my, my teams uh, around, you need to understand how a seller is paid. How, is, how, how do they earn their revenues? What is, what is it that's motivating them? Because if you don't understand how they're motivated, it's very difficult to have a relationship um, with them. So it's important to understand you know the objectives that the sales teams have what are they you know what are they trying to you know get to by the end of the year in terms of revenue numbers but what's the product mix in order to get there because that will really help as well you start to talk their language and the other thing is don't dial up net new stuff that you're expecting a seller to come and engage with sales teams already have their own rhythm of the business they have kickoffs they have um sales meetings they have off-sites they have probably weekly calls, they have lots of different ways that they already interact together. What I've done is uh, it, that sort of approach of go where they are. So don't dial up a marketing meeting for sales to come to, go and ask whether you can go and present in one of the already existing sales meetings, a particular idea or, or marketing activity that you need to, so that you are having a constant drumbeat of communicating to the sellers. Um, but you're doing it in meetings that they're already going to turn up to. Otherwise, you'll find that they won't turn up to the stuff that you do. Uh, and also, we've made sure that we've got very, very close to the heads of sales in, in each of the departments and made sure that we are using their communication channels um, to communicate weekly on marketing. Could be a newsletter, could be Yammer, could be whatever, you know, that, what feed they're, they're using. But how do you maybe put a sort of two-minute, soundbite for marketing in the weekly newsletter that goes out or the weekly communication as well as going to sort of more fuller uh, meetings. So go where they are, understand what their pressures are, understand how they are going to uh, you know, uh, get paid and make that number at the end of the year and then talk to them in a language where they understand that marketing can help them plus take some insights with them about their accounts which they wouldn't have known previously but you've, you've got access to because you've been able to get that from the data in the company. 
Thank you so much, Scott. Fortunately, that's all the time we have for today. I'd like to say a big thank you to Scott for presenting the webinar, and thank you for everyone who attended. Um, once you leave today's webinar, you'll receive a survey on the presentation, and we'd appreciate it if you could provide us any feedback you have. And on behalf of Sim, thank you for joining us today, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day.